and let us all that we can to build a better future. You know what? It was only a matter of time. We've seen anti-war activists calling out people like AOC, Elon Omar, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Cory Booker, Barack Obama himself. We're seeing, again, more people calling out the Democrats for their hypocrisy, for ongoing warmongering, and for failing us um, in regards to fighting for the people. Now, this conflict that's happening overseas in Ukraine, I said it before, I'll say it again. The longer it continues on, we are putting ourselves at risk of a violent exchange between us and Russia that will lead to possibly the extinction of humanity. We're better than this. It's time for diplomacy to take action. Now, asking the Congressional Progressive Caucus to do the right thing means that you would need people in the Congressional Progressive Caucus to actually have a backbone, to actually have a soul and compassion, which, again, a lot of these progressive politicians lack. To think, at one point, I actually respected some of these uh, progressive leaders when they got into office. That was my mistake. Who would, who would ever think that uh, they would easily be co-opted into the Democratic establishment? But you know what? It just goes to show you, you can't reform anything in Washington, D.C. It truly is a swamp bubble. But now, the president of the United States was also called out. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, again, huge shout out to Jose Vega. He was actually on our show. Uh, and he shares this uh, video. Uh, now, it's not him, but it is uh, a few other people who are friends of his who confronted uh, President Joe Biden if he will negotiate with Russia. So let's pull up this video right here. I think it's absolutely glorious. Some of my friends confronted and asked Joe Biden if he will negotiate with Russia and stop the insanity that's driving us towards the end of humanity. Will President Joe Biden listen? Uh, Jose, I love you, buddy, but, you know, <laughs> Biden's probably going to be there saying, what, Jack? But anyways, uh, or will uh, we be drawn ever closer to the inevitable thermonuclear war? So let's play this video. I think it's downright uh, brave of these anti-war activists to, again, stand up to these politicians. And don't be surprised to uh, at you, the audience, don't be surprised if you start hearing the sheeple start, well, booing them. President Biden! Pope Francis has opened up the Vatican over for peace talks. Will you negotiate? Now, notice Biden said, and I'm going to rewind the video back, but he said, somebody said that my birthday is coming up and uh, some other, you know, words in, in the background. No one needs to hear that, Biden. President Biden! Pope Francis has opened up the Vatican over peace talks. Will you negotiate, sir? This real war must never be fought and cannot be won. Will you negotiate, sir? Will you negotiate? Russia and China have a no first strike policy. What about America? That's more like my generation. I thought the Democrats were anti war. An anti-colonialism. All right. Cringe. I'm with you. Hey, anyway. Look. The war between Ukraine and Russia must be brought to an end. The next couple of years is going to have more to do with what this country looks like four years from now. And that's how you know that the vote blue no matter who crowd are just as blind, just as loyal, just as intellectually challenged as diehard Republican voters. See, the thing is, there are voters and then there are, well, cult voters. All right, so what do I mean by this? Well, you have people in Team Red and Team Blue, the Democratic and Republican Party, who thoroughly believe that their said politician, who they elect for state or federal offices or even an office of presidency, that these politicians actually respect them. And you, we could thank corporate media. We could thank, again, our entire system for brainwashing, uh, successfully brainwashing, a lot of our fellow Americans. The two-party system is designed to keep us obedient and subservient. That's what it's designed to do. So whenever you meet some diehard Republican voter or diehard Democratic voter, know this. You're looking at someone that's stuck in a cult. They actually believe that the people they elect in Washington, D.C. respect them. And you have the crowd chanting, we want Joe, we want Joe. There's no difference when you hear a Trump crowd saying, we want Trump, we want Trump. Well, look, here's the real reality, folks. None of these politicians are going to go to bat for you. The only people that they care about are their donors. 
especially those in the military industrial complex and big oil. We need peace, not war. Look, this election not isn't a referendum, war. it's a choice. This election is not a referendum, it's a choice. See, again, it's a senile old man rambling. If 2022 plays out the way I think it'll play out, where it's Biden versus Trump, like I said in the 2020 general election, and there are videos of me saying this with Daniel and Kira right there beside me, it's going to be two old men fighting over a cold bowl of soup, Biden and Trump. Two old senile men fighting over the cold bowl of soup called America. Does that sound appealing to all of you? Does this sound like the best we can do? Biden versus Trump, round two, or heaven forbid, Hillary versus Trump again, 2016, rearing its ugly head again. We it's a choice a between two fundamentally different visions of America. No war I've said from the beginning. No, there's no war. Nuclear war cannot be won. It cannot be fought. You are playing with all of our lives. You are trying to get us into a confrontation with Russia. You are trying to get us into a nuclear war with Russia. You are taking off all the economic. Get out of here. You have started on a proxy war with Russia. And you would think that a Democratic voter would like to listen to someone with a different opinion. You would have figured that the liberal crowd would sit down and actually have an organic uh, glass of tea with them and maybe have some uh, muffins with them and actually hear their perspective. But notice, they're quick to saying, be quiet, be silent, get out of here. Look, if uh, the United States and Russia start exchanging uh, their nukes, that's the end of humanity. There, there's no recovery. We're done after that. And to the poor remains of humanity that's left, the survivors will envy the dead. You are trying to kill us all. Oh, I tell you, I love that. Thank you, Black Man. 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 Mr. President, will you please reaffirm the statement that Big Pharma almost always stops us. But not this year. This year, Big Pharma lost and the American people won. We put a cap of two thousand dollars a year on prescription drugs for seniors, no matter what their cost. Two, ten, twelve, fifteen. Oops, step on them. There's a. It's black. Anyway. <laughs> he was gonna trip. He was gonna fall down. Uh, but I hope all of you caught that. I'm gonna rewind that again, just one more time, okay? <laughs> Oh, we, we 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 have a senile Mr. Magoo leading this country. Step on him. There's a it's black anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Ilinar. Il that's right. I hope I hey hey audience audience. Just because I love you, because I love all of you, I'm gonna rewind that again for a third time. Right? Uh, Ilinar says Joe stepped on a black. Hey, that's what he said. Oops, step war. on him. There's a, it's black. Anyway. <laughs> Type one if you heard that. Type two if you didn't. One more time. Just just, just because you guys are great. There's a, it's black. Anyway. Ah, uh, and uh, Z -Lad, uh, Z1 Lad says, uh, where is Harris when you need her? He almost fell off the stage. And that is true. That is true. Oh, so only very few of you heard that. Hold on. Fifth time, and then this is it. I'll, I'll give you what's my final thoughts on this. There's a, it's black. Anyway. All right, dances with Aardvarks. All right. See, here's the thing. Aren't you glad that I'm in charge? See, if this was FaZe, he'd be he, he'd be giving me that look right now. Like, dude, I played this back, like, how many times for you? One more time, just for you, dances with Aardvarks. There's a, it's black, anyway. <laughs> <sighs> we live in a clown world, folks. clown world, folks. We live in a clown world, and we are stuck with a senile president. 
Uh, but it's good to see more of these anti-war activists starting to step up. Tomorrow's going to be November 8th. And when this video is clipped, it will be November 8th. And here's what I'm going to do. I will vote. I'm going to vote. I'm going to support third parties. I'm going to support independents. And I'm going to support ballot initiatives. If I see a Democrat or Republican, I'm leaving it blank. If I can fill a write-in, then I will. That's what I'm going to do. Now, you, the audience, it's up to you to make your own choice. If I can offer a suggestion and not a demand, a suggestion. I know that many of us have been burnt out by electoral politics. I know for many, I've posted uh, at least uh, two polling questions on the YouTube community page for Hardlands Media. There's a good portion of the audience who voted who are absolutely indifferent to voting. But to the audience that that is indifferent or chooses not to vote or just really doesn't want any part of it, if you do live in a ballot initiative state, if anything, vote for the good ballot initiatives, if anything. That will be the one good thing you could take away from this midterm election cycle. Um, and if you could support a third-party candidate, do that too. Uh, but this is a bigger picture of just how truly incompetent and how far the Democratic Party has fallen. They don't care about the issues. They don't care about the fact that we are in this ridiculous war, this quagmire with, with Ukraine and Russia, the United States constantly encouraging it. Millions of people are severely impacted by this ongoing conflict that's happening in Ukraine. The one way this madness can stop is if we have diplomacy. Now, the Biden-Harris administration has made it very clear. They're not going to do a damn thing about it. And whether or not something can be done after this midterm election cycle has yet to be seen. We've seen the Republican Party put on this mask of, oh, we got to stop this war because of this ridiculous spending. It's all politics. It's all a game. But if we can get people to sit at the table, I'm all on board with it. But the real thing we must do is start building movements and organizations not connected to Washington, D.C. We've seen the great work of some of the members from RBN Network, how they're out there helping out their community, helping out others. And that's what all of us must do.